Well, I got a preform here that I'm going to be using. So I'll be using it to uh, make a similar arrowhead to that one we saw in the previous video. I'm uh, I'm not going to make an exact copy of this. Uh, I've, I've talked with some collectors, and they, you know, they really don't agree with uh, reproducing these exactly because it, there's a chance of confusing them with the real thing and I understand their point. It'll be very similar. I, uh, I'm going to put a needle point, a needle tip on it. It won't be exactly the same. I think I'm going to make the, uh, the base a little deeper than this one. But I'm going to try to get the same thickness and the same flaking pattern. See if I can reproduce basically the technology that was used to make this. There's very little edge retouching that I can tell. There is some here. There are very, very slight serrations. So there is some retouch, but it's it's not major. It's just enough to put in that very minute serrated edge. And uh, I did some videos showing how I came up with this preform, but uh, I did not have it on the macro mode, so you can't see it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'll just start with this. I've still got a lot of mass to remove. And uh, explain my thought processes as I go. I was asked about that, <clears throat> and I think it's a good idea to explain actually what goes through my head when I make these uh, step by step I guess uh, the most important thing I think about basically is I don't want to break it believe it or not that's the most important thing that I think about the next most important thing is what what do I want to make out of it now I know a lot of guys they they kind of let the stone decide what's going to be made, uh, depending on how it goes. You know, if they mess up here, oh, well, I guess it can become this kind of thing. But uh, I guess I used to be that way, but I'm, I'm at the point now where I will choose a point that I want to make and just try to make it. And if it breaks, I'll just throw the pieces in my broken box. I won't try to make a different kind of point out of it. But uh, as far as uh, a system for doing this, uh, it's very basic. I try not to think about it, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, I do thin out the ends first, um, because that allows, that allows you to uh, work on it without breaking it. If you thin out the whole thing, uh, it leaves too much, mm, too much of a chance for it to break in the middle because it's not going to support the bending stresses. When it's thinner on the ends, the stresses aren't as great in the middle when you're hitting on it. I know there's a lot of physics involved, but I, I don't think about any of that stuff. What I think about mainly is hitting below center line. This type of flint napping this indirect percussion generates a lot of force and if you're above center line when you're hitting the edge the chances of cracking it are very great but if you're below center line you're not going to send that force up you're going to send it down most of the time now there are times when you generate so much force it doesn't matter where you hit you're going to crack it but for the most part, you have to learn how much force to apply and at what angle. And that just becomes second nature after a while. I don't think about it too much anymore. I, I used to. Uh, I know that when I pressure flaked a lot, I used to think about the angle quite a bit. Um, with this, it just becomes second nature. I guess I've been doing it long enough. It just I kind of know what angle to use and it just comes through practice.
there's a lot of mass in there. So that's not going to be easy to remove. I might be able, I might have to come in from the base up to remove that. <laughs> 